Hello everybody. It is bitter, bitter cold. Oh man. I'm uh, going out to haul some doggies and do this one handed. Excuse the camera here. Sorry guys. Hope that doesn't make you motion sick. We're going out to uh, to haul some cattle today to Holdridge, Nebraska. We're on the last little bit of a nasty, nasty cold streak that we've had here the last few days. Wind's been blowing. I think it finally blew itself out last night. We've had the truck in the shop, uh, changed the oil, did a bunch of service stuff. Come back up here now and I'm hooking up to the cow trailer. The old, I like to call her the Kansas Special. Here's why I call it the Kansas Special. Cool games. <laughs> uh, checking lights. Looks like my flashers and blinks are working. I've been home for Thanksgiving, and uh, whack. Cha -cha. These old girls. It's a little too cold to be doing tire work, so we're gonna make another round. Okay, we got one more leg to lift up. Anyway, been home for uh, been home for Thanksgiving. It's been nice. A little uh, little get together. Did a little podcast, and we went over to Brother Luke's place. I'm trying to do this without shaking the camera so bad. <laughs> so, sorry, it's a two-handed job. There we go. Here's what I was doing. I got to put these these pins hold these legs up. <laughs> Anyway, um, went to Brother Luke's, it's great. Good time, nice time. Got a neighbor across those hills over there about, oh, he's about 10 miles, eight miles that way. By the highway, probably four miles by, by the bird. <laughs> Not that I don't have a bird, but. <sighs> anyway, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna go load. We got two loads of cattle going out. So Cody and I are gonna do a little double run. And we have not done a double run, Cody and I, probably since we hauled that hay. You guys remember that hay we did with Heavy D? Where we brought that hay from South Dakota and they brought it up from Utah and we all met. I think that was the last time Cody and I have done a double run. Despite the fact that now Cody's driving my truck, um, we, you'd think we'd have done more double runs together but uh, this will be our first one. So we're gonna go load. It's about five degrees out right now. Uh, some of you are gonna be wondering already. I'm letting the trailer air up too, that's what I'm doing right now. I have to air the trailer up with air and then it releases the brakes. But anyway, for those of you that are wondering, I know this is gonna be a question of this, this episode probably. Um, temperature. Let's go cattle can withstand unbelievable. Cattle can withstand 30 below zero. 40 below zero, no problem, no problem. As long as they stay dry, okay? Cattle get real wet, if they're just soaking wet, and then it's windy and cold, then they have the same problems that humans would have, staying warm. But if they can stay dry, you're golden. So the biggest key to this, and I believe uh, Dennis, Dennis did this, but we wanna dry lot these cattle for at least eight or 10 hours. Uh, I mentioned that in a previous video. So they've been off feed all night, I think they fed them yesterday afternoon and they pulled them off water and everything last night so there will be no whizzing going on they won't be peeing on each other it's cold enough that whatever poo falls and the trailer is going to freeze immediately so they'll be essentially dry okay um, the inside of the trailer protects them real well from wind um, unless you have a real nasty crosswind which we shouldn't have it should be mostly diagonal or tailwinds with this run so uh, that's kind of the answer to that question. Cattle are, cattle are amazing. They're unbelievably strong creatures and resilient. As long as they can stay dry. So we'll keep them dry and they'll be, uh, they'll be happy. We'll rock this thing. So uh, let's get out and uh, burn some diesel, huh? Oh, what a deal, what a deal. Hey guys, it's Jax. And I've got a problem. Little sense 
from Montana goodness for you. Come on. Oh yeah, and a shameless little.
fellas. Boy, you're gonna look real good for YouTube today. Yeah, you should load me 60 and then give Cody about 40. He'd love that. Yeah. <laughs> How are they weighing up? Good, Mark, how are you? Kind of in your own home country today, doing a little. Huh? Doing a little inspecting in your own home country here instead of at the yard, huh? She's done with the yard. Who are you? Has it been for a while? No, I'm never there anymore, so I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. They can go back there going this way? Well, we can just. You want me to just turn it on here and we'll take a few off? Okay, we loaded. Lots of room. Lots of room looking good. I'm loaded. Let's go get Cody. We'll get Cody gathered up and then uh, hit the old road. The wind has kind of died. Well, probably doesn't sound like it, but the wind's died down a little bit, so it's not quite as gnarly as it was. All right, you guys, we're all loaded up. This is my good neighbor, Dennis. Dennis, you've been a great neighbor forever. Forever. The only neighbor in the whole county that we haven't had a feud with. Yeah, well, we're trying to. <laughs> so they, they border, I was telling you guys earlier, how far is it, like three miles is the crow flies? Four miles, I think? Yeah, three to four. Three to four. So anyway, when we first moved into the country, they were like our first welcome to the country folks. And we, Dennis and I worked at the, at the stockyards together for, 10, 10 years probably. Oh, I was there for 10 years and you were there the whole I've time. I've been there 21. So anyway, we did that, but uh, you're doing something a little different with these calves because you're, most people we ship calves and they sell them to the feedlots. You're going to do something different. We're going to feed them all the way out. Mm -hmm. So you're going to, you're not going to sell them to this we're feedlot. Gonna, no, we we'll sell them. We're going to buy the, they just send me a feed bill all the way and then we'll sell them and first of June probably. Okay. So he's just gonna hang on to them. It's a way, it's it's more risk, right? Oh it's yeah. a little more risky because you're owning them still all the way we through. Own them all the way through. I and still gotta get them all the way to Nebraska. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> he's worried about us on the roads. We'll be good. I tell him he doesn't need to worry because they're all insured. I said if if this will be a surefire way you can make some money on them if we lay all these trucks over. <laughs> so, I don't want you to. <laughs> no. So anyway, yeah, Dennis will keep them and feed them and uh turned out pretty well last year for you so yep. try it again and i always appreciate a good neighbor giving us the holler to haul his cows so yeah. we'll see how she goes you do it yeah we'll stay in touch okay by the way dennis everyone's gonna want to know where did you get that hat it's it pretty spectacular because i have problems with my ears yeah i get cold really yeah i can put this on and I'm i was hope you're not old enough to grow hair out of your ears yet yeah, they but tell I don't me have when I get old. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's your head. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, awesome. that's cold. That's cold. the section up there I can get. <laughs> well, you're looking the part today. <laughs> so do you put that on? Huh? <laughs> couple, couple funny things came to mind. I got to share with you. <laughs> so, first one is a truck driving tip. Okay, I've been 117 miles on this stretch. And for the entirety of this this uh, this deal, I've had a truck right on my tail. I mean, right on my tail. Like at times, maybe 20 feet off my bumper. At times, maybe 20 yards. But the whole time, just right. I'm just right there, boys. If you're out, either either pass or get back. Like if, if you need to pass, pass. That's fine. I have nothing wrong with being passed. I'm all for that. But either either get on by or get on back going to travel the same speed as I am that's fine too but get it on back about you 
know, a quarter mile or so. Just get back. It's not good for anybody. It makes me drive more aggressively because I feel like I'm being pushed and he has a lot of visibility issues that he's not able to see. And if there's anybody that comes up behind us, we have to pass two trucks in a row instead of just one. So really no good reason to, uh, to camp out behind somebody for more than a few miles. The other thing is this, now this is when you get a kick out of it. When I started trucking, I started, and, and I need to do a, a more in-depth episode on this and see if I can come up with some pictures and kind of walk you through my trucking history. Uh, you know, through picture, whatever, whatever kind of picture and video I can find from the old days. Um, you know, before smartphones came out, everything was so, there's so much less of, you know, videos and pictures and things are just harder to find. So when I started trucking, I, I've, done, I've done a little unconventionally. I did it, I did it debt free. I've done cash only. I borrowed money to buy my very first truck and two weeks into the loan, the bank came back and was like, hey, uh, we need proof of full coverage insurance for your truck. And I'm like, I'm not getting full coverage insurance for this whole whip. Are you kidding me? So they're like, well, you have to if you want the loan. So I was like, well, forget it. So I just paid the loan off then and there. And ever since that, never borrowed money again for anything that I've ever bought when it comes to my truck and stuff. Um, or my personal life, for that matter. But the funny part about it is that I couldn't just go out off the get-go and buy a big old fancy truck. I had to kind of ease my way into the trucking. I mean, I started with the lowest and slowest. And literally, I would truck with that truck for whether it was a few months or half a year just long enough to where I had enough cash saved to make the next upgrade. So because of the, because of this, this flow that I had, I always went with uh, two trucks. I always had a backup truck in case the main one went down. So I'd have two cheap old trucks, right? And I've kind of always just done that. That's what started this whole truck thing. There it goes, <laughs> finally. Um, that's what started this whole trucking thing where I've got all these trucks piled up. And as I could afford to upgrade, I'd sell one buy another one you know I just keep kind of leapfrogging my way up the trucking line and because of that it's caused me to be in a situation where I've gone through a lot of semis in not a lot of years okay like I say I want to do a special on this sometime just so you can get a better clear clear idea but I'm gonna roughly just throw the number out and say that I've been through about 15 semis uh, since I started trucking because I did it cash cash only you know debt free so, so as a here's the unintended consequence of this I see my old trucks scattered around the countryside all the time I'll be out here trucking in my good over the road trucks now and I'll like pass the truck and I'm like oh hey whoa that was my old freeliner <laughs> so just now I'm coming across and I passed this it was the first 379 Peterbilt that I ever owned and it had a Detroit in it I bought it for uh, I think it was $14,000 and uh, it was a 97 and it had a Detroit in it and the 15 speed with the old horseshoe uh, overdrive over and up you know what I'm talking about you know anyway I just passed it out here I when I, I had owned it I, I uh, it was time to upgrade and I wasn't using it much so I sold it to a guy for $21,000 uh, in the oil field in, uh, in North Dakota when the oil field was hopping and uh, never saw it again. I just passed it. He was pulling a load of uh, pulling a load of hay, a big hay train out of North Dakota. I don't know who ended up with it. The oil field guy probably went under, went out of business, as a lot of them do, and sold it probably to a local farmer or rancher. And I just passed it. <laughs> I was like, oh, my boy, my boy. I wish that I could have every one of my semis back. If I could and had a way to, I would have every single one of them back just because they're like, Oh, my baby, even my Volvo. Uh, it was a 90, 97, I believe, with an N14 in it. Ripping little truck. Sold it out here to a, to a farmer out in eastern Montana. Parked on the side of the road. I was driving through Billings last week. Saw my old classic Freightliner and the, one of my old Barrett cow trailers. Parked at the stockyards unloading cattle. And I was like, oh, my boy. They're just all over the place. So I, I almost feel a little bit like I'm a... Uh, you know, you hear about like the traveling musicians, like the rock stars, the old 80s rockers that have like all these illegitimate children sprinkled around the countryside. <laughs> they got like 25 kids. Uh, you know, I feel a little bit like that's me with my old trucks because like they're just sprinkled all around the country. I'm like, there's one, there's another one. Uh, uh, this one's there and that one's up at that farm. And they're all just spread throughout the country. And I've slowed down on that a lot in the last couple of years. 
now that I've kind of got settled and got into the trucks that I'm, that I'm that I'm that I want it to be in. You know, not as much of the truck trade going on these days, but uh, <laughs> I had to tell you about it because I passed that boy. So hopefully, a little YouTube special upcoming this winter sometime when I have some time to sit down and dig through my old social media, my old blog posts from the old days back when you used to blog on a website rather than Instagram or whatever. So. <laughs> Uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to whip that up. Again, you're always watching for cattle that are laying down. Getting stepped on. Looking good so far. This old truck. <laughs> Little windy wind. There he is. Let's see if we can catch up to him. Hey, hey. Tires are looking good. Oh yeah. He's keeping up on things pretty good. Dang it. I keep trying to catch up. It's too fast. <laughs> You guys, 
You guys remember this guy? Oh, the dunes! Huh, how's everything looking? Good. Mine too, like not even. Pretty smooth trip. Yeah. Well, you need gonna... I might get a drink. Well, I gotta get my, yeah, I gotta get my super tanker. I forgot it. You guys, dude. Not only my best friend, but he's now driving his truck for me. He sold his truck this last year. Um, when the market was just insane, he decided to sell his truck and just come drive. And uh, you couldn't ask for a, you literally couldn't ask for a, a more capable, like you just turn them loose and never worry about anything. It's like, if something breaks, he'll fix it, he'll figure it out, he'll do whatever. The kind of thing that'll spoil me to ever having anyone drive for me ever again. I've waited years and years because I don't want to deal with drivers. When Cody popped up, I was like, oh, done. Boom. Here's my truck. Here's my big trailer. All the, you just, here you go. Just keep him happy. Yes, because anyway, he's great. He's great. I'm going to go grab a drink and uh, we'll press on. Get the old rig a rocking. Ah, here we go. Man, I should have brought my camera inside. Wouldn't you know, the second I leave it in the truck, we run into a good old friend of ours, me and Cody Bolt. Had a good chat, you guys have enjoyed it. It was just like a good old trucker chat. But, uh, it started something like this. Cody was in already, he'd already used the bathroom. Washes his hands, comes out, and he's like, hey, buckets in there, he's in the bathroom. Like, you know, number two. And I was like, oh? Bucket's the nickname of our old buddy. And I'm like, okay, so I go in there and I'm just like, oh man, oh, what is this, this is, this is a travesty, what is going on in here? You know, there's nobody else there, just, just our friend in the stall. <laughs> so I'm going on and going on about how bad it is and, and I'm not getting any, any reaction from him. I'm thinking he'd recognize it was me, you know, what, not getting any reaction. So then I start to worry, I'm like, wait, what if Cody was messing with me? telling me the guy that's in there is a friend of ours when it's really not. And I'm just going on, just totally trolling some guy in there on the toilet. So then I quit about halfway through just like, uh, when the stall opens and out walks old bucket. <laughs> but I was, I was worried for a minute. I was like, oh no, what if it's just some random, just some random stranger. He can come out and be like, what's wrong with you, man? Be like, I thought I was, sorry, miscommunication. Uh, but that gives me a good idea for next time I'm trucking with somebody. I might try that. Next time I'm trucking with a buddy, be like, hey, it's our other buddy in the toilet in there. And then uh, pull a fast one on him so he'll go in and tease some random. You follow me? Oh, man. All right. Well, we're good. I think we got 600 miles to go, roughly. Um, I believe. So we're just getting a good start on the day. Sounds like I got one of my trucks uh, down there right now. He just drove through it. He said roads are already clearing off. Things are looking pretty good. We'll have a few little spots here and there, but it doesn't sound like we're gonna have much. So I think all the worrying and the stress, and I felt bad, like I said earlier, Dennis really was worried about us going down in there. Sounds like we might, uh, we might luck out and uh, might work out good. So we'll find out. We'll hit, uh, we'll hit where the storm was probably about about one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. So, till then, we're just gonna keep uh, keep her steady on the pedal. Yep. 
Yep, everything's been good. Just rolling right along. Nothing, uh, nothing to worry about. A little road update. Uh, Nolan, my lead guy out there that loaded last night, said that maybe I mentioned this, but anyway, the roads are just getting better and better all the time down where we're going. So we should be in pretty darn good shape. made it to the napping spot but before we can nap we gotta check these cattle and make sure that they are doing all right it's very important when you're hauling cows that you make sure everybody's up and happy it's okay if they lay down from time to time they just gotta be in a comfortable spot. And as you can imagine, in the dark, hauling cows, it is important to have a good light that can shine under these legs and really give me a good view of what's going on in here. I see that one's laying down, but he's in a happy place. Also to check my wheels and tires. But everything's looking to me like it's in good shape and uh, everyone's safe and happy so if they're safe and happy that means I can be safe and happy and take a nappy <laughs> so that was some pretty serious light you saw coming out of that, uh, that flash that I was using checking those cows I'm gonna show you this again because I have found it to be extremely useful all of that light that you saw was put out by this thing, all right? Now there's a gazillion million little cool flashlights, blah, 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 right? You've seen them, you've used them. I like this one and I'm gonna tell you why I like it and why I've been using it. Number one, it's just the right size, that it's not too small and it's not too big. A big one is a pain to use, a small one is too small and I lose. So one's a pain to use, one's a pain to lose. Ah! Anyway, what really sold me on this flashlight is this right here. Yeah, see that? Uh-huh. I can hold it in my mouth comfortably, which sounds weird, but you guys, when you're on the road and you're trucking, there's a lot of situations very often where you have to hold a flashlight in your mouth and use both of your hands. And this proved to be just right because it's got this square body. Ah, so it worked really well. One night I had a calf down in my trailer and uh, I had to get in and physically get the calf up. And a big flashlight I wouldn't have been able to use because you can't set it on the floor and the cattle would have stomped on it. I was able to use this light, which actually is uh, its made by a company called Olight. The model is the Arkfeld. Anyway, I held this thing in my mouth for like five minutes while I was in there wrestling with this calf in the dark. Got the calf up, got everything squared away. So uh, if you need a durable little flashlight that'll just fit on your sun visor, it's not too small to lose. It's just the right size to use. Go check them out. Use the link, you get a great uh, little deal, and uh, try it. It's actually, they're a little bit pricey, but I found value in it because I've been using it like crazy. I love it. y'all I'm gonna show you something here we're in Valentine Nebraska it is four degrees and we're fueling up here for a specific reason and that reason is this see that mud flap fuel this is the mud flap app it gives you fuel discounts little focus or not but 379 <laughs> All night long, we will fuel for 379. So we're gonna go turn the pump on and uh, partake of the cheapest diesel. Still outrageously high, by the way, but the cheapest diesel seen in a long. 
long time. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's frosty. It is frosty. Using my favorite little light again. My little Arkfeld O light. Looking good in there. Oh, everybody's, everyone is happy. As far as I can see. Tires are happy. Calves are happy. Got a little got a little steam coming off. They look like they're staying pretty dry too, which is which is good. Climb up and check our check our top deck. How's that for English? Check our top deck. Check our top deck. Oh yeah. Everybody's standing. Whoa. Except for maybe one up here. Let me double check. Oh no, they're all up. Everybody's good. Woo. trailer I love this is my first ever quad axle trailer Cody's pulled it most of its life and uh, he's kept it in great shape but I love this trailer because it came with these winter boards so you can put those on every other hole and it just keeps a little uh, keeps a little more heat in there however with cattle sometimes it'll trap also more moisture in there so you know in condensation from their body heat so you don't want too many on there or they'll actually get wet inside, but just the right combination. Makes for a nice little nest. Here we got going on. All right. Back on the trail, y'all. The final leg. <laughs> oh, the final leg. Let's see if Cody remembers how to get out of here. <laughs> oh, that does feel good to get a discount like that on the diesel. Man, it's been tough out here, so. I'll pass a little of that along in my rates. You know, if we can fuel up and save some money on fuel, I'll go ahead and cut the rate back for these guys a little bit. Pass some of that along. Because that's the whole, is impetus? Ooh, is that the right word? That's the, that may be so far off. That's the whole impetus for having high rates because fuel went high. But everyone's always so reluctant to bring it back down to earth when the fuel gets cheaper.
Cody and I. So this this road just runs in. It's just a grid out here. Every mile there's a road, and uh, they're on they're on 739 Road, two and a half miles in, right? But he said, come in on 240 Road, a mile north, go in two miles, and then cut south. Because he said that two mile stretch of uh, 739 Road is a minimal maintenance, kind of a more of a dirt type road. It's it's super froze up now. It's only 10 degrees, but anyway, he uh, he said to come in on 740 and drop south. So I went down to 738 is where he turned around, and I was like, man, I could probably go in on 738 and come up a mile. But one time, Cody and I were in Kansas and we we're dropping off at a feedlot in Scott City, Kansas. And there's two ways to get into that feedlot. One is you got to go all the way into town and then go way south of town and then cut back in. Or before you get to town, you can take like a seven mile dirt road in. And there's a big sign for the feedlot on the highway that points you in on that dirt road. And so all for a couple years, we'd hauled in there and didn't know any different. And uh, so anyway, that same thing. And we hauled about a load a week in there. And we pull in one night, and they had, unbeknownst to us, had just had a tornado come through and dumped a ton of rain. And of course, it doesn't say anything, there's no signs like, hey, this is the feedlot, as long as the weather's good. Um, let me double check, yeah, we'll keep going another mile. Um, as long as the weather's good, it was just, here's the feedlot, seven miles in. So I pull in off the highway, and immediately I can tell, you kind of go down a dip off the highway, and then levels out and you go down the road I make it like 300 yards in and it's just a grease ball wow spinning clawing and I'm like there's no way I'm gonna make it in so so I get stuck 300 300 you know yards in and I get on the radio and I'm like ah Cody don't come in <laughs> it's gonna get it is it is gnarly and nasty and uh, he had already of course, the time I realized what was going on, he had just pulled in. I mean, just enough where he couldn't back out. And uh, anyway, I ended up having to bring a big four-wheel drive tractor all the way down and uh, put a chain on my bumper and just help me along. I wasn't like stuck. They just needed to give me a little, just a little help. I remember that big four-wheel drive tractor was just kicking up mud, oh, just hogging it all over my truck. Uh, I think that was Cody and I. It was either Cody and I or uh, Kelly and I. It might have been Kelly and I. It was a long time ago. Anyway, nonetheless, I learned my lesson that you uh, you don't want to mess around with unmaintained roads. Of course, it's, it's nine, nine, ten degrees. Like I say, it's all froze up. Probably wouldn't matter. But <laughs> I always think back to that little lesson I learned. Yeah, you want to watch it. You want to watch it take the time, flip around, and come back up the way they told you to come in, rather than venturing out into the darkness. Alright y'all, I got mine unloaded. I didn't bring the camera out for me because Cody was waiting on me, but let's go give him a hand and uh, get these babies out. <laughs> cattle sleeping all right man I actually feel pretty doggone good for 3 30 in the morning surprised I thought I might be a little more kind of dragging after being home for Thanksgiving but uh, not the case feeling good it's always a relief these guys always kind of want to unload in the morning not always but a lot of times they want to unload in the morning They'll say, just take a nap and we'll unload in the morning. But it's really hard to sleep with cattle on your truck. So ideally, you always want to unload now. So we can go park somewhere and get a few hours of good sleep with no cattle on the trailer. Yeah. Whew. Mine was all froze down. That was something hanging on it. I have no doubt that my counterbalance will be all froze. Wire a bar. Come on, guys. Hey. Shh, 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 shh. Hey. Hey. Hey, somebody try. Shh, 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 shh. 
Oh yeah, they're all gonna go down backwards. There's like two of them going backwards. Come on, guys. Hey, come on, kid. Come on, boppers. Try a little bit. Turn around. You think after all this, <laughs> Cody must have given him too smooth of a ride. That's always a sign of a smooth ride when the cattle don't ever want to get out of your trailer. Just take it as a compliment. Because <laughs> it means they had a real nice trip. So you guys, when I talk about dry lotting cattle, this is why it's important to dry lot them. We gotta open this gate in order to let this compartment out. And we can't open the gate until the old prospector here gets the gets it all chipped out. help if I shine that light up in your eyes? Yeah, that helps the bus, thanks. Nice. <laughs> oh. wore this hammer out last couple of days. <laughs> oh. Yeah, a little a little dry lot goes a long way to keeping this manageable, that's for sure. <laughs> Here we go. What I'd give for a wild hand grip. <laughs> How many did you have on? Huh? How many did you have on? 92. 92? Yep. Atta boy. Okay. <laughs> Just like that, man, I'm winter time. <sighs> Part of the deal. So there's a hot, remember that hot water washout where I, no, actually I didn't film myself there last time. Anyway, we'll stop in South Dakota tomorrow on the way home. There's a trailer washout built on a hot spring. So like 100 degree water comes out of the ground. Unbelievable high pressure and heat. And so we'll, we'll take these trailers over there tomorrow and use that to melt all this ice out and wash them out. Get all squared away. <laughs> but uh, that's it, we're gonna weigh out. We'll go find a spot to tuck in and uh, try to miss the sunrise if we can't help it. side of the road like that old boy <laughs> he was like on the road 
I don't recommend that. <laughs> uh, interesting. But here we are. Oh, and look at it, it's five degrees out. I'll show you this. It's five degrees out. Somehow, this is actually melting. <laughs> I think it's melting because this has a lot of like salt dust on it or whatever. From, well, I can't see that. It's uh, road salt. So everything's coated in that salt. There's everything. And uh, there she is. Old Dunes must be sleeping good. So this truck, cool thing about this truck, it has, if you reach your hand inside here, see he has his engine shut off. It's just warm and toasty inside. You can feel heat just pouring out of here. So this truck has an engine heater. Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> it's got an engine heater that also heats the bunk. So he can shut off and it'll circulate the antifreeze in the engine, keep the engine 140 degrees, and then also heat the whole inside of the cab. So as long as your fuel is treated and you don't have to worry about it gelling up, you can shut this truck off below zero and just everything stays toasty warm. Um, my truck has a bunk heater inside, so I shut it off uh, last night when we got in here. It was about seven degrees, so I shut it off and uh, used my bunk heater so I didn't idle. It's idling now to warm up, but I didn't idle last night either. Uh, this this truck that we rebuilt with James, little Jimmy Crack, it starts so good. I've never, uh, I don't think I've ever been around a truck that starts so good as this one did. Even right after we overhauled it, it was like second, third crank, remember that? Boom. And so even now at seven degrees after sitting for some hours, just, boom, cracks right off. I don't worry about it starting in the cold. I worry more about like, you know, is the, all the airlines staying, you know, staying open and not freezing up, things like that from shutting it off. I worry more about than the engine starting. But I do need to get a, I do need to get a, I'd like to have a deal like Cody has on Charlie Brown. This does have an APU on it, you probably noticed. I need to, uh, I need to swing through sometime and have it, swing through the factory and have it serviced up and going. It has a deal on it, it's an old APU. Stands for Auxiliary Power Unit. It's a little diesel engine in there. And it has a deal that's set up where you can start that little diesel engine and it's it's like a generator and it'll actually plugs into your block heater. So as long as that little engine's running, it would heat my block. Similar to what Cody's truck has going on. But uh, anyway, we'll get her uh, we'll get her fixed up for hopper time when we go and start doing hopper work again. Oh, here old dudes is fired up. <laughs> Oh man, you guys, when the sun comes out, sun comes out, feels good. So uh, plan today is uh, not much. We're gonna, we're gonna scoot on up to South Dakota. We're gonna go hit that hot water washout. I'll show you that thing. And uh, you can see how that just burns this, burns this frozen manure right out. Ooh, cold and frosty. <laughs> Just blast it right out of there. It'll take a little time, but, and then we'll get all this salt and stuff rinsed off too. Look here, see? See how it leaves that, that's where you can tell it leaves that residue. Yeah, definitely salty. So we want to rinse it out all this, you know, aluminum, it's not quite as hard on, but these, uh, these steel cross members, it sure, uh, Sure corrodes that stuff. <laughs> uh, another good thing I was looking for this morning. There's no drips, no leaks, no nothing. Very little, little tiny blow by. Detroit's are known for they always have a little blow by, no matter what. But uh, anyway, it's getting frosty out. 
Let's uh, let's hit the high road, huh? There we are. Guess where we're at now? Right back where we were last night. Topping off with a little more cheap diesel. Got about a three hour drive, three and a half hours north of here is the hot springs. Most people like to go to the hot springs to soak their bones. We go to the hot springs to soak our poo, our frozen poo. Anyway, Cody and I are gonna have a nice little, we always like to have a friendly little competition to see who uses the most fuel. We both topped off here last night. Obviously, just to give you some reference, he weighed 105, five, 105,500 pounds last night when we unloaded. I weighed 89,500. So it's not really fair because there's no way that he used less fuel than me. Although the old Cascadia is pretty efficient. We do love that track. Um, well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what the difference is here. All right, to be fair, I did top this tank off last night. So I gotta be consistent. Okay. What's it gonna be? 83 gallons. Oh man, do I even wanna know? Now I'm kinda nervous. Are you guys nervous for me? A little nervous. I'm a little nervous now. I got my number. <laughs> 82. Oh, no way! I was 83. <laughs> Stinking Kenworth. 82 gallons he put in. I put in 83. See? That truck owes me nothing. Man, oh man. <laughs> yeah, that truck owes me nothing. One of the most efficient running rigs I've ever encountered, ever. <laughs> is that, to call it Charlie Brown is what we named that track. And it, I mean, so here I am, granted this engine's still breaking in and everything. And I hogged on it pretty good last night ahead of Cody. But, you know, he's 105, I'm at 89 or 90. So he's got another 15,000 pounds on. And, uh, doing the deal oh he's just so happy right now <laughs> that stinking dog he's never gonna let me live it down look at him all puffed up in his pride this is a real hot dogger thank you thank you yeah. slinging a lot of fuel this morning it looks like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you what's your guys's discount yeah what big is uh mud flaps 90 cents i think oh, okay yes yeah, we fueled last night here yeah, late. Yeah. 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 It's pretty. I don't know how that discount program works, but we like it. Yeah, a lot of people do. So. <laughs> yeah. So total savings on this one was 77 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys have a good day. Yep. I think last night it said like $183 in savings. <laughs> yeah, and that's for two both tracks. Right. $300 yeah. savings. I can't believe you did 82 oh, pounds. I'm so you pumped dog. about it. I'm so mad. <laughs> Like, this is, I'm gonna post this truck for sale. I figured you. <laughs> Get rid of it. Find another Cascadia. Sneak him, Kenworth. <laughs>
wash out in Montana that's hot water is like a hundred and something. But it has one catch. And the catch is this hill to get up in here. Most trucks have to just put the hammer down. But I had a wise little trucker friend, old Keither, told me one time, you just put your lockers in, in your truck, and just let it crawl. Just let it crawl up. It'll spin and it'll claw. You don't give it any gas. If you give it gas, it'll spin out. See that spun right there, but she's clawing. It's just this outrageous hill. It's just craziness. But if you give it gas, it just spin out and gets stuck. You just gotta crawl. It's weird. So you're like, no, no, give it gas. But you just don't. It's like, no, just wait, just wait, just wait. And uh Sure enough, just like that, look where we are. Just clawing our way up the hill. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, so we're waiting now. We got two guys here, looks like. And this guy's, yeah. We'll be waiting here for probably 30, 40 minutes before we get our chance to wash, but that's the way she goes sometimes. That's the way she goes, so. We'll wait our turn, I guess, and then, uh, I'm gonna get geared up. I'm gonna try to put the head, uh, I think I have a head stall thing for my uh, for my GoPro. I'll try to put it on so you can get the full POV, point of view, washing out a cow trailer. Really exciting stuff. Oh yeah, you know it. There you have it. Pardon the mess. <laughs> so when people complain about their freight bills, think they're a little high, 
you can say I will gladly I will gladly cheapen up the freight if you meet me at the washout <laughs> oh this should work out good I think Cody's pretty close to being done and we're gonna go grab some dinner at Belfouche and then uh, wind will die down here a little bit I did get some drone footage you noticed okay. wind will die down a little bit and then uh, we'll saunter across into eastern Montana till we're a little tired go to bed gotta get ready we got a two-night show coming out this weekend two nights Friday Saturday it's gonna be fun here comes another truck Boy, this place is like a gold mine. Just a cash cow. Four days, 45 bucks a truck, and they just, two bays, $90 an hour, just, and this water comes out of the ground whether we like it or not. It's a, it's a hot spring deal, so it's cool. We're very thankful to have it. Glad these guys, uh, glad these guys do it. Look at this dude coming out. See, he's doing the, oh, dang it, didn't make it. Darn it. Probably putting his power divider in. Come on, buddy. Ah! You have to back down the hill and do it again. Darn it. It's a pain, you hate to chew up your tires. So, <sighs> that's the one downfall of this. They're supposed to be redoing it here this, this summer and getting it all sweet. But that hill is a beast, especially when it gets snowy. You just, you, you need it. When it's snowy is when you most need this washout and it's when it's the hardest to get up. So. Anyway, all right, I'm gonna go pay up here and then uh, go grab a little dinner. fishing in there, you'd never drink that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Are you just smoked? Just from watching? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's always, from Nislin to here is always the longest 25 miles. Yeah. You're like, I don't know if I'm gonna make that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that other cow truck? Yeah, Coming left. behind us and didn't pull the hill the first time, had to back back off. Yeah, oh yeah. And then hit it again and then looped around. And, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And then, uh, who's the guy that left? Was Is that the guy you're talking about? Uh huh. There was another truck at the end that I think you were finishing washing up. That last Lynch truck. Uh huh. He didn't make it. Either. Oh really? He got going on the top. <laughs> you're just like, stop, 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 stop. stop. You're making it worse. You see chunks of rubber just fall out. <laughs> uh, yeah, that. Is it a Twitchell truck? Uh huh. Yeah. So I mean, he waited like 
just a couple more minutes. Right. Well, I mean, another 20 well, minutes. Well, but it's the washout in the wintertime. Right. It's part of it. Oh, the illness. I, I wish that they would put in like a like a bathhouse. So uh -huh. actually you could like soak in the hot spring. Right. Right. What can I get for you today? I will do coffee and water, please. All right. Thanks. You plan on driving a long ways? No, it's just what I drink. I was doing the math. I'm like, if we didn't stop, we'd be home by like 10 30. Oh my god. My problem is, I get home, and I gotta unhook the trailer, and I'm like, I broke the truck in the shop. I'm like, oh, I should wash it now so the shop will be dry tomorrow when I get back in. <laughs> and I usually end up washing it. But then I don't have a ride home, so I walk home in the dark. Freeze my face. One o'clock in the morning, yeah, yeah. the boogeyman trying to get you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. Have you, do you, have you ate here in a while? Just breakfast. The breakfast has been pretty good. They have a $17 burger. Oof. Yeah. That better be good. What are you, uh, what are you kind of known for? Uh, it's like the famous old trucker. You gotta have something. Nothing. You gotta have something. Nothing. Come on, don't, don't tell me that we've been Not driving. This town. We've been driving for two days with nothing to eat, and this is our one chance. You gotta lay something on me. I don't have anything. Nothing? Nothing. What would the cook say to you? He'd say uh, the same thing? I mean, we've got Mount Rushmore. That's yeah. in Rapid City. Okay. It's the most exciting as it is. I thought you were naming a burger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about, how about on the menu? Yeah. Um, we've got a poutine. Like what? Like Vladimir Putin? Uh, <laughs> sure, I don't know. That he's is. the... He's not real popular. He's right the now, master of Russia. Oh, no. Vladimir Putin. It's it's a better french fries smothered in brown gravy and top of cheese. Oh. Mm, it's like sounds a like a heartburn Canadian express. meal. <laughs> is it? It's yeah. a Canadian thing? Mm. Oh, what's the soup today? We've got uh, two of them. Vegetable beef barley or potato beef. Okay. Okay, well give us a couple minutes and we'll figure something out. Alright. Mm. I would have been I would have been equally as stumped. I said, what are you known for? Mm -hmm. Geographically. Yes. <laughs> in Belfouche. <laughs> yeah, I think we're in a John Wayne movie. <laughs> a couple of them. Yeah. Thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> they, is that the Cowboys? That's the one he does. Is that the only one he dies in, or is there one other one? I think in the shootest he dies in the end, if I remember right. Good old John. Oh, man. I don't know. Maybe we should just hit the road. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've had all of the cold case sandwiches I can eat for a while. <laughs> I bought that one last night at Valentine. And I just got in the truck and I was like, no, mine was pathetic. I didn't even eat, I didn't eat it until like after we unloaded it. Like, <laughs> I was just like, no. And then they're eight dollars. Yeah. Know, for some bread. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I might just go with breakfast. I think I'm gonna. Breakfast and a cup of soup. <laughs> I've done the trucker skillet several times. It's usually really good. Have you? No. Okay. Oh. I had. What's I gonna do? I had a couple of questions for your viewers today. For my viewers? Yeah. Was like, <laughs> like, how can you be so insane as to waste your life watching this channel? <laughs> oh. It was. If I start a channel called Dubloons, Dubloons, would you follow me instead? <laughs> Maybe that was your question. Yeah, that'd be fun. Watch me throw regular temper tantrums and then sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Paul threw a good one on the phone the other day. He had a coming apart on some car. Oh, I hold see. on! Ah, what are you doing? Come on. Every time. Like the old days. Yeah, I was like, Paul, oh, you're, no, you're regressing. 
Yeah, I feel like he makes it up because there's, it's literally every time we're on Marco, if he's in his truck, he's <laughs> coming apart. <laughs> Why would you go on a green light? <laughs> Why would you go on a green light? <laughs> well, I told the story on the podcast this last episode about when we all crowded in Paul's truck. <laughs> to scare him when he was asleep. And they were like, oh, too much, too much, too much. <laughs> I'll never forget a tap on his door. That was when he had that gal with him. And she slept in his bed, and he slept in the driver's seat. I jump up on the step, and boy, he sits up out of the chair, and it scared me because you weren't expecting him to be. We called him Roy Munson after that because his comb over was oh, yeah. standing straight. <laughs> Poor old Polly. <laughs> and he's never seen the movie, so he doesn't know who Roy Munson is, <laughs> and so he just doesn't get it. But oh, yeah, didn't mean to turn this into a Paul, a Paul talk. <laughs> Uh, I called him uh, and I told him, I said, sharpen your pencil and see what you would charge me to not hate Judith Gap. No, oh yeah. To just let me graze it, you know, because then I can let the south end of that place rest for a year. And, and, <laughs> and it's a good thing he's honest because he could have gouged me, but he's like, oh, the only reason we hate that is for you. Because you want it. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, we're, not, we're done, eh? And I'm fine. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> How much was it? How big of a spot was it? With the hay? Oh, there's probably 250 acres. Yeah. Something so like that. A lot of yeah. yeah. And it's got good volume to it. It's just the alfalfa is all wore out in it, you know. But, yeah. Didn't they cut it with the draper Last header? Year, yeah, they got a 36 foot draper header. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I, uh, took on a hay haul for this week. Did you really? Huh? It was, uh, <laughs> I'm doing it because I've got, we're going to Vegas on Thursday with my house. Oh, so I only okay. have like two and a half days uh, I can drive next to it. So, uh, Jerome, the Mennonite, oh, okay. we can do the little cattle rep. Oh, oh, it was where you lo you loaded those heifers at his dad's place. Oh, okay. okay. Maybe his brother maybe loaded them. Oh, yeah, probably um, young, there was a young guy there. Yeah. Right? Okay. Anyway, he's kind of taken over Steve's superior cattle stuff. Oh. He's kind of his protege. So Steve kind of, they count. Right. Steve does some and Jerome does some. But mm -hmm. He said his dad has a hundred ton of four by four by eight square bales to go to Harlem. Oh, nice. I was like, <laughs> yeah, square bales? Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I think three, should be three rounds. Oh, okay. 185 miles. Uh -huh. What would you have quoted in per ton? Oh, um, per ton? Think back. Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the table sitting here? Or? No, you should be wide open, I think. Uh, 185 times 2 divided by 5. What's the feeling of this down? 515? I think 498. Or oh, you go down first instead of drop under 5? Well, 515, that's 500, 1524 bucks a load. So, so under, uh, sorry, 34 ton a load. Okay. That's $45 a ton. That's what I quoted, yeah? Yep, good. <laughs> yeah, I was worried. <laughs> I was like, ooh, I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> So, you know, I told Rocky the other day, I said, boy, I was running the numbers on that straw, man, and I just, I can't give you a break anymore because it's not my equipment. And I said, doing the numbers, you're looking at like 850 a mile on that train. He's like, yeah, stuff's expensive. I'm like, no, <laughs> like, no, go take your truck. Take your truck and haul your straw. I don't want to do it. I want the money. I don't want none of it. <laughs> Have you, seen, have you seen the video of the guy that, um, he's like, I drive a lifted Dodge Ram pickup truck. <laughs> you haven't seen this? Oh, I gotta find it for you. <laughs> this, this guy's just really sick, he just stares at the camera, he's just he's holding the wheel, he's like, I drive a Dodge Ram pickup truck. It has a six inch lift. I roll coal at every 
every stoplight. <laughs> he just goes through this, this, all the stereotypes that are in room. And he does it with all these different vehicles. I am a Honda Civic. I, I have a huge spoiler on the back of my Honda Civic. <laughs> so his hand's keys and he's like, oh, that's like Holton. <laughs> oh, I laughed. Oh, oh. 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 <laughs> I have searched truck stops high and low across the country looking for busted knuckle wrench knife. There it is. $29.99. Right there. I mean. Buy that thing. <laughs> you gotta have it. Whatever it is. <laughs> it always blows my mind what you find in truck stops. Yeah, I'd be like, but if you look over here, there's a samurai sword. <laughs> Why have a wrench knife when you can have a full grown samurai sword. Remember the one in Garden, yeah, garden City? Yeah, always had these. And like medieval war helmets. <laughs> and then like the sculptures of like uh, like fairies. Like Tinkerbell fairies <laughs> doing magic. <laughs> then, then they tore the restaurant down and put a vape shop in. <laughs> Come on. Like, medical marijuana vape shop in the truck stop. You're like, hmm. <laughs> oh, what do I need you guys? I need something to give me just a little boost. We gotta get down the road a little further. I'm not sleepy, I'm wore out. We'll see. I remember when candy, candy bars used to be 50 cents. You guys are thinking, I remember when candy bars used to be 25 cents. Oh, one of my favorite little snacks right here, you guys. Sponsored message right here. All right, y'all. Well, on that note, uh, on that note, we're gonna wrap this episode up. Hope you guys enjoyed coming along. We uh, we thought we were gonna encounter some sketchy roads. Everything turned out perfect. I'm glad that we hauled the cattle when we did. Um, had we postponed, you know, it's just a guessing game. But had we postponed, we could run into weather. You know another trip another day different state different time you know how that goes but it ended up just being perfect all the way down cattle rode good cattle came off good feedlots got them all in good care dennis and the boys are in good shape got the cattle down cody and i got clear back in here to montana we're only about four hours three hours from home so we'll be getting back in good shape tomorrow to get on uh with some other stuff around home but uh thank you guys for coming along the trucking trips are fun. They're fun. It's fun to bring you along. I know they're a little different format, especially hauling cattle. When we're doing hoppers, uh, you know, I can do a little more than I can when I do cattle because cattle, you're just like, go, go, go. Um, but anyway, it's a, uh, it's a little different, a little different format because we're just a lot of monologue and driving and showing you the country. But, um, anyway, uh, had a good, hope you had a good time. Cause I had a good time. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I'm tired. Um, Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep keep some links in the description for you guys. Um, some of these companies that are kind of trying to help support the uh, the program a little bit. I've talked about most of the products I think that are down in there, and uh, just uh, keep them up for you if you have the hankering to do a little surfing. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm gonna uh, practice a few songs for the show, which is in two days, and uh, I'm gonna hit the rack. So, till next time, you be good.